Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at um, Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, the Law of Combining Volumes, Avogadro's Law, and the Ideal Gas Law. And we're also going to be looking at how we can relate uh, gas density and molar mass. Alright, so in this series of videos uh, we're going to talk about the properties of gases, solids, and liquids. In this video we're going to focus mainly on gases, and I'm going to introduce a number of laws that will relate the moles, pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas. Okay, we're going to start off with Boyle's law. Okay, so Boyle's law states that the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. That is, that volume is equal to K on P, which is pressure, where K is any constant. All right, so that's really kind of short and sharp. That's what Boyle's law is. Okay, the next law we're going to look at is Charles's law. Okay, so Charles's law states that the volume of any gas is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. Okay, so that is the volume is equal to K times its temperature, where K is any constant. Okay, the next law is the law of combining volumes. And this states that the ratio between volumes of reactant gases and products can be expressed in simple whole numbers. Okay, so really we're talking about here the fact that in any reaction where we have um, gases in the products um, and gases in the reactants, we can relate the volumes of these um, using kind of simple whole numbers. Okay, all right, so the next one we're going to look at is Avogadro's law. Now, Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of a gas at the same pressure and temperature contain equal numbers of molecules. Okay, that is that volume uh, equals K times N, where K is a constant and N is the number of molecules. Okay, so this applies regardless of which gas you have. And that's really important. This is telling us that no matter which gas we have, if we have the same volume, at the same temperature and the same pressure, we've got the same number of molecules, okay? And that the number of molecules we have is just directly proportional to the volume. Okay, so all of these laws can be related together in one equation. And this equation is known as the ideal gas equation, okay? And this states that PV equals nRT, where P is the pressure in pascals, V is the volume in litres, N is the number of moles, and R is the gas constant equal to 8.314 joules per mole per kelvin or 8.314 kilopascals per uh, mole per kelvin. Okay, and T here is equal to the absolute temperature in kelvins. We will discuss the different units used for R, this ideal gas constant, later on. Okay, so this equation should appear in your data sheets, but it's used so commonly that it would be good to remember it. Okay, another point to note is that the pressure of a gas is equal to the sum of all the partial pressures. Okay, so this is where the partial pressures... The partial pressure is the pressure of one component independent of the pressure of other components. So if we have a mixture of gases at different pressures, the total pressure of the system will be equal to the sum of all the pressures. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next point. Okay, so another thing to note is that we can actually relate um, the gas density to its molar mass. Okay, so gases have quite low densities as the molecules are far apart. We find that the we can find the density of the gases by using the molar mass. So let's work out, let's work through how we would do this. Okay, so let's derive the equation for this. Okay, so we know that density is equal to uh, the mass of an object divided by its volume. Okay, we also, if we can remember um, from junior chemistry, that the number of moles we have is equal to the mass of something over its molar mass. Okay, so where mass is little m, molar mass is big M. Okay, 
So now the ideal, uh, the ideal gas law states that P, uh, PV equals NRT. Okay, and rearranging this, we can find that the volume is equal to NRT on P. Okay, so let's put this together with our value uh, for the mass. Okay, so we can use this and we can find that the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass. So let's sub in, um, let's sub in these two equations here into this. Okay, so we know that density is equal to the moles times the molar mass for M uh, times the pressure over an RT. If we cancel N out, we find, finally, that our density is equal to our molar mass times our pressure over the ideal gas constant times the temperature. Okay, so we can now relate the density of a gas to its molar mass, the pressure, and the temperature. All right, so let's do an example. Okay, so let's find the density of oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals. Okay, so using our equation that we found, we know that density equals the molar mass times the pressure over a constant times the temperature. Okay, so we know that the molar mass of oxygen uh, is 32. So remember oxygen, this is O2. Uh, the mass of a single oxygen atom is 16, so 2 is going to be 32. So we have our density is equal to 32 times our pressure, 100, over our constant, 8.314 times the absolute temperature, which is actually going to be 298 Kelvin. Okay, that's because uh, if you look at your data sheet, you'll find that 0 degrees is equal to 273 Kelvin. So 25 degrees is equal to 298 Kelvin. Okay, this is just a linear scale between these two. If we go add 25 to one, we add 25 to the other. Okay, you can find this on your data sheets, so you can easily convert any kind of temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, evaluating this, we'll actually find that the density is equal to 1.3 grams per uh, liter. Okay. In this case here, we actually have to be really careful with our units. Okay, the best way to ensure that we've done this correctly is to write the units down of every component of the equation to make sure that we end up at grams per liters, the units for density. Okay, so let's, I'll, I'll demonstrate how we can do this now. So I'm actually going to write this out again down here and I'll space it out a bit more. Okay, so density is equal to 32 times 100. 0.314 times 298. Okay, so we know that this here, so this is our um, number, this is our molar mass. So this here is equal to, uh, we write it over here, grams per mole. This here is equal to kilopascals. Okay, this here is equal to kilopascals um, per mole per kelvin and this here is just equal to kelvin okay let's cancel out the same what's in the top and the bottom so that's the same that's the same uh, and this is sorry per liter as well and these are the same so all we end up with is grams per litre, so grams over litres are the final units that we end up with. So you see how we've drawn out, we've written out the units for every single component and then we've cancelled out what's the same in the top and what's the same in the bottom. And we're just left with 1.3 grams over litres. Okay, and that's how you solve this. Okay, so as well as this, this further shows us that the gas density will depend on the identity of the gas, that is its molar mass. Okay, so that's really kind of self-explanatory from what we've looked at. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.